Hi guys, this is Sadek from Rodman.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest Sendwide GSI ROM based on Android 15 on any Android phone. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First off, get hold of the latest Android SDK platform tools from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You may extract them anywhere on your PC. In our case, we have done so in C drive and as you could see, these are the five platform tools. Once you have done the extraction, you will now have to enable USB debugging and OEM locking. USB debugging is required for ADB command, whereas OEM locking is required to unlock the booter on your phone. So let's enable both the toggles. For that, you have to go to the settings menu on your phone, then about phone, and tap on build number or OS version 7 times. You will get a prompt that you are now a developer or the developer mode has been enabled. Once that happens, go to system or additional settings and you should now see developer options. Go there and enable the toggle next to OEM locking as well as USB debugging. You will get a prompt on your phone, check mark, I am aware of all the risk. Wait for 10 seconds and then tap on OK. This prompt will only appear on Xiaomi Poker Redmi phones and on all the other phones this prompt will not appear. After that you might get one more prompt regarding the USB debugging RSA fingerprint. So tap on OK and with this the debugging is now enabled. Let's verify the same. So go to the address bar of platform tools, type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch the command prompt inside platform tools. If that does not happen, you may go to the start menu, open CMD from there, type in CD space, paste the path of platform tools and hit enter and you are now inside the platform tools directory. Now type in ADB device and verify that you are getting an ID. If you are not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official USB cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on the PC. So carry out this USB fixer and verify that you are getting an ID. Once you're getting this ID, you will now have to unlock the booter on your phone. Do know that unlocking will wipe off all the data and it might make the warranty null and void as well. If that's well and good, you could refer to a guide and the video and get this job done. In most phones, you have to use the fastboot flashing unlock command. After that, you will get a prompt on your phone. So use the volume key to highlight unlock the booter and press the power key to confirm. With this, the booter will be unlocked and your phone will undergo a wipe and boot to the OS. So make sure to re-enable USB debugging once again. In case of Xiaomi phones, you have to use the Mi Unlock tool to get this job done. And the HyperOS steps are somewhat different. You may refer to a guide to know about the HyperOS steps as well. Moving on, you may now get hold of the latest Android and Android 15 GSI ROM from this link. Once you've got the GSI ROM, also install the 7-zip software onto your PC. Once you've installed 7-zip, then go to the GSI ROM file, right-click on it. It will be in a .gvet format. Right-click on it, select Show More option. Then choose 7-zip and extract to sendroidgsi.img. And you will get the IMG file, copy the IMG file and transfer it inside the platform tools directory. It will take only a few seconds. Once that is done, rename the file to something shorter. So let's rename it to, let's say GSI and the complete name becomes GSI.IMG. Once that is done, you will now have to get hold of the VBB meta file for your phone. So make sure to get hold of the same VBB meta file from the firmware, which is currently installed onto your phone. You may verify the firmware version from the build number of your phone. For instance, as of now, I'm using a Xiaomi phone. So the build number in my case is 10170. And then there's the UMRI next time, which is the version code. So U stands for Android 14 upside down cake. MR is the device code, which is POCO F5. IN is the region. IN for India, CN for China, EU for Europe, RU for Russia and so on. MI for global and XM is the firmware code, which is same for all the Xiaomi phones. Anyways, in case of Xiaomi, you have to get hold of the fast boot ROM. And will be in a .tgz format, extract .tgz, you will get the .tar, again extract .tar via 7zip and you will get the following folder, go to this folder and go to the images folder and get hold of the vbmeta file, then transfer the file inside the platform tools directory. In case of pixel phones, you have to download the factory image and the factory image looks something along the following lines, just give me a second, I'll show you that as well. The factory image is in a zip format, so extract the zip file and then you will Get the following folder, go inside the folder, go to the images folder and get hold of the vbmeta file from here in case of Oppo, Realme and I guess OnePlus. The firmware is in a zip file. Upon extracting the zip, you will get a payload bin file. So you will have to use the fastboot enhance tool to extract the payload bin file. So let me show you how that to be done. So launch the fastboot enhance tool, go to payload number, click on browse. Then go to the partition tab and choose the payload bin, click on open. Go to partition, check mark allow incremental. Select the VB meta file from here. Let me just show you. And click on extract image, choose the location, click OK and the file will be extracted. So transfer the file inside the platform tools directory. So as of now, both the VB meta and GSI should be there inside the platform tools. And the VB meta should be from the same firmware. 
which is currently installed onto your phone. So once you have checkmarked both the requirement, you will now have to boot your phone to the fastboot mode. For that, type in ADB reboot bootloader and your phone should boot into fastboot mode in a few seconds. So let's just wait for that to happen. And once your phone is in the fastboot mode, you will have to type in fastboot devices and verify that you are getting a serial ID. Just wait a few seconds. So if you're not getting any ID, then you'll have to install fastboot drivers on your PC. We have made a guide and a video on the same. You could refer to a guide and get the job done once you have installed the drivers. Right click on the windows icon or use the windows plus x shortcut keys and choose device manager then expand the android phone section and verify that your phone is being shown here as android bootloader interface so this as well as the serial id next to fastboot signify that your pc is able to read the phone in fastboot mode and we are now good to go ahead so first of you have to disable the android verification check by flashing the ppmeter file so copy the entire command and paste it in the cmd window and with this the check is now disabled after that you have to boot your phone to the fastboot d mode for that, type in fastboot reboot fastboot and your phone should not reboot into fastboot D. The fastboot D screen will vary depending on the phone which you are using. In the screenshot, it's a Pixel phone and currently in the video, you will see a Poco phone with a different screen. That does not matter. Just make sure you are in the fastboot D mode. Now, first and foremost, you have to remove the logical partition, product A, so as to make space for the GSI ROM. So, copy paste the command and hit enter and the product partition is now removed and you could now flash the GSI ROM onto our phone. For that type in fastboot flash partition name which is system file name which is gsi.img and hit enter and the gsi rom flashing will now start and as you could see the gsi rom has been broken down into sub smaller 13 system partition file each of these five will now be flashed individually and will take up to around a couple of minutes at the very max so let's just wait for that to happen so guys the flashing is now complete now your last course of action is to do a format data which will wipe off all the data from your phone. So type in fastboot space dash w hit enter and the formatting is now complete. Now just type in fastboot reboot and hit enter and your phone will now reboot to the new flash OS. Do keep in mind that the first boot up will take up some time which is completely normal. Moreover, let's just wait for the boot animation or the boot logo to appear which will signify that the flashing has been done successfully either of which will appear in a few more seconds. So let's just wait for that to happen and then we will have a look at the ROM feature as well. And this is the GSI ROM logo. So the ROM should now boot up in a few more seconds. So guys, with this, we are now inside the Android GSI ROM. Let's get started. So as of now, I'm skipping the initial setup process. If you want, you may link your Google account, restore all the data right away. But as of now, I'm skipping all of them. I'm skipping the lock screen as well. So let's skip that. And with this, we are now inside the Android GSI ROM. The wallpaper is quite different and even the theming is brownish in color and this is the settings menu. So we have the new revamp Android 15 settings menu, which is quite great to see. Apart from that, let me have a look at the volume keys as well. So the volume panel is the okay. It's the older one only, not the new one, which is not a major cause of concern. Then the predictive back gesture. Okay, first I'll have to change the back gesture. This should be there under system, I suppose. So buttons, that gestures, let's choose the navigation mode to gesture navigation. And now let's have a look. So you could see the predictive back gesture. This will give you a sneak peek of what is behind the menu. And this is working well and good. Uh, anyways, moving back. And apart from that, there is also the power menu in QS styles, which is also there. And the screen recording in just a single app record one app you could also do that just choose the app of your choice from here and the recording will only take place inside that app once you move over to any other app the recording will pause and only re resume once you are back in that app then apart from that we have the private space as well let me see if it's there or not so it's there as well let's first set a screen lock for the ease of convenience i'm choosing a three cross three pattern only but that is not the most secure option please choose the most secure option and with that in mind the screen lock is now set up let me verify it once and now let's go to the private space confirm the existing lock screen and now you may either choose the same lock or choose a new lock pattern for the private space for now i'm choosing a new lock pattern so let me first confirm my existing lock and now i'll choose a new lock again it will be a pattern for the ease of convenience but you may choose any other password or even fingerprint of your choice but for now let me skip all that stuff and the private space should now be made in a few more seconds in the app drawer and it's now done as you could see we now have the private space over here just tap on the lock icon input your password 
and you could now access the private space likewise you could also add new apps over here in the private space you even have the option to hide the private space from the app drawer enable the toggle and when you lock the private space it will be hidden from the app drawer as well as you could see so you could now only access it from either from here or from the settings menu so enable it and you could now access the app drawer or rather the private space from here and then when you lock it it will be gone once again so these were all the android 15 features and then you have a few triple settings for the phs rom for the gsi rom by phh and these are the various audio tweaks which you could carry out some display tweaks as well install ims apk if you are having issues with the 4g calling issues and that's just about it then let's have a look at the wallpaper and style section as well over here you could change the wallpaper i guess these are the wallpaper from the evolution x rom and whatever wallpaper you choose the theme and the ui and ux will change accordingly thanks to the multiple ui theming engine then you may also choose more colors from here as well and the theme will change accordingly as you could see this is the brown color which is the usb of this rom then you may also choose any other color from here as well there are quite a lot of options you may even enable the dark theme but for now let's go with the white only and this one was the default i guess okay yes so for now let's access the default theme only and then you may even go to the home screen and change the enable the theme icons and they are now enabled likewise you may change the app grid size maximum is 5 cross 5 only which should be more than enough for me and Apart from that, under systems, gestures, we only have the normal gesture with nothing new as such. Then you may update the ROM files from here. No need to do the flashing in the files to demo. Simply download the update from this link and get the job done. So since the ROM is based on Lineage OS 22.1, you will get the update from of that only. That's not a major cause of concern. And apart from that, there isn't any major. So let me have a look at the reboot option so there is no advanced restart we get the normal restart option usually in, in gsi rom we don't have the advanced restart so that's not a major concern so guys on that note we download this video if you have any queries with regard to any of the steps do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching